Hey guys and welcome to Functional Print Friday and welcome back to my shop. In last week's video, I designed this little stand or holder, whatever you want to call it, for these five counterbore tools. And I showed you guys the design in real time, meaning I started a video capture and I showed you from beginning to end in on shape, starting with a blank document, all the way up to an actual three-dimensional design that we could export and 3D print how to do it. My thought process, how to use all the tools to get there. And my intent was, for those of you that I know watch these videos and would really like to get into designing your own parts, but you feel like it's such a steep learning curve uh, to learn CAD, that it's not that hard. I myself have only been using Onshape for about a month. Prior to that, I used SketchUp, which is not really a CAD program at all. Now, I could have gotten to the same result in SketchUp. It would have been very different and, in hindsight, nonsensical in comparison to how we do it in, call it, real CAD. Well, I had such an amazing response to that video. So many great comments. Not only comments from folks saying, hey, thank you, that was really great to see that, and you know, saying that you were gonna go try some of your own designs yourself now, but also so many comments and suggestions for how I could have done this better. Not only improvements to the design, but also improvements to the steps that I took to reach this result. Well, guys, I listened. And here is the updated design. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this because I actually have a challenge for you guys this week, and that's what this Y-pipe is back here. But really quickly, I just want to walk through it because, again, so many great comments. And so many people had the same suggestion, so I'm not going to mention any names because many of the things that were suggested were suggested by, you know, five or six people, and I'm not sure which comment was first. But the first suggestion that I got was when I designed this one, I dimensioned the holes off of the center point rectangle that made up the overall base, and then we adjusted the size of the base at the end. In hindsight, that really didn't make any sense to do. It would have made a lot more sense to dimension everything off of the center point, to dimension the position of the holes, the distance of the holes, all off of that center point. That makes much more sense. You can't see that change here in the updated design, but that's what I did. I redesigned this, starting with the center point, and dimensioned the distance from the center point to this row off the center point, and same thing for this one. I've made these two points or these two lines equal distance and then these two lines equal distance from the edge. And you can, you can actually then define the total size needed for the base uh, based on the sketch of just the whole pattern. Much, much better than the way that I did it. Again, there's so many ways to get to the same result in CAD. I, I have a lot to learn myself, but that was probably the biggest change that I made to this. The other suggestions that I got were why not move the numbers down in front of the holes versus how I had it here originally? And that's a great suggestion. I also incorporated that. I did do a multicolor print on this one and I printed the top of these in black. Many people suggested that I could have just done that with a Sharpie and you know we could still do that on this one, but it's not a big deal to just have it switch the filament and do one top layer with a different color. And I think that looks so much nicer. The other suggestion that so many people had, again, was, if you look at this one, you look at the position of this hole, it has equal spacing for these two holes across the whole width of this part, but I think it makes more sense to position those holes centered between these holes here. And I've incorporated that change in this updated design as well. Now this hole falls directly between these two and this hole falls directly between these two and it's actually dimensioned off them that way in the sketch. The other changes that I made were I guess, well, I mean, this one's not really cosmetic. The, in this one, if we look at this, the holes stop. They don't go all the way through. Now, they don't go all the way through because we don't want the part to drop all the way through, but someone suggested, actually, I think a couple people suggested, why not make the holes go all the way through but have a step in the hole? That way, if you get chips or other things to drop into here or end up in there because maybe they're on the bottom of your tool, you can push them through or blow them out with you know, a little air blower on the compressor uh, to clean it out versus trying to get that same sludge, grime, whatever, chips out of these blind holes. Great suggestion. I took that one as well. The last two changes on here are mostly cosmetic. If you look, this has a sharp edge on all four corners. I added a round over on this. Again, not too extreme. It just kind of softens that up a little bit. And then I also added a small chamfer on the bottom of the part. Uh, as well. I didn't have any issues with adhesion on this one. You can see that that stayed stuck to the bed really nicely. But a lot of people mentioned that they add a small chamfer on the bottom to help with adhesion. And I think also just to help with visual appearance. And it does kind of look nice. So let's make it official. 
switch these parts over. Yeah, that really does look way nicer. So again, thank you guys so much for the suggestions, not only to the workflow, but also for the design itself. This Y pipe is one half of the design for next week's video. Now I'm not gonna show you how I achieved this result in Onshape. I will next week, I'm not gonna show you this week. Because while this one was printing, I had an idea for how I could have achieved the same geometry with less steps in Onshape, like a more efficient way to do it. And I followed through on trying it and it worked. And then it became kind of like a, a challenge as to what is the fewest number of steps that I could take in Onshape to get the same geometry. And I think I started with around either 10 or 11 steps. And I'll show you in Onshape what I mean by a step. So we're all working from the same set of rules. But I got it down to, well, I'm not going to give you the number. I'll say it's fewer than 11. It's actually fewer than 10. I'll say that. But I'd like to challenge you guys to design the same part with the least number of steps. Because I know based on the comments from last week's video and you know lots of other videos on the channel, there are a lot of you guys watching that are real experts in cats. So I'm really curious to see what you guys can come up with for you know, methods or ways to get to this same part with the least amount of steps. So what do I mean by steps? Well, in Onshape, we have features and parts. That's sort of our sidebar over here. And I guess we have what we call two separate trees in here. We have a features tree and a parts tree. I'm not really concerned about parts, although I will say you do need to have a single part that you can export from Onshape that's ready to go for 3D printing. All you're gonna do is open it in your slicer and slice it for the printer that you're gonna print it on. And no, you don't need to print anything as part of this challenge. I'm just saying you need to have a finished design. Like you can't plan on doing like Boolean operations or something else on it in the slicer to complete your design. It has to be ready to go out of Onshape. So I'm defining steps as anything that shows up in the features tree outside of the four default items, the origin, top, front, and right. So just as an example, if I click on the top plane and we make a new sketch, and maybe we just start with like a center point rectangle, we'll define this guy as 100, um, and end my sketch, that is one step. That sketch is one step. Now, if I was to take this and extrude it, that is another step. See, both of them show up here. And you know, no tricks about dropping things into folders and trying to count it as a single item, just by default. Like as you perform the operations in Onshape, you're gonna collect different features or different steps over here in the features tree. The, the challenge is to complete the design of a Y pipe with the least number of steps. Has to be an Onshape. If you don't have an Onshape account, Look in the description of this video. There's a link there. You can get an account for free in Onshape. It's not going to cost you anything to do this, uh, but it does have to be in Onshape. And I'll also make sure that there is a comment that is pinned. So if you go down to the comment section, it's going to be the top comment. I will re-outline the rules for the challenge in that comment. I want to give you guys an update on the shop and also get your opinion on something. I need to shift things around in this shop. And I have done this more times than I would like to admit. It usually happens every time I bring in a new piece of equipment or something, you know, fairly large that just doesn't, that I can't make fit with everything that is in here. And this time is no different. I am at least planning on getting, it's not a sure thing yet, but I'm planning on getting a piece of equipment that is going to occupy like that whole corner down there. So like this is going to need to go half of these base cabinets here are going to need to go or at least get shifted someplace else. And the shop is really piecemeal. All the things in here I've acquired from in different ways and in different times. Uh, just as an example, you know, uh, like this toolbox and this toolbox, I purchased those brand new from Sears when they were on clearance. That's why they're different colors, probably 25 years ago at this point. Uh, this eight drawer unit down here was on the side of the road with a free sign in rough shape. Picked that up, refurbished it, repainted it. Now, I'm a sucker for stuff like that. I see something on the side of the road with a free sign. I imagine what it could look like rather than what it does look like. And I end up redesigning half my shop around it. Uh, that drawer unit over there and the lower one here were from my uncle's shop. This drawer unit here, a friend of mine saw someplace and gave it to me. Uh, this Craftsman stack here was from my grandfather's shop. This Kennedy stack was from Facebook Marketplace. That has all the lathe tooling in it. I'm actually really happy with how that's working out. 
This is another Facebook Marketplace find. This was free, and I just happened to be the first guy on that one. Uh, this base cabinet here, these base cabinets here, also Facebook Marketplace, got a great deal on those. This tall steel cabinet over here, I bought from a guy that buys, I think, returns from either Global or Granger, one of those companies. I had a good deal on that as well. It just had some scratches on it. But if I'm going to redesign things around in the shop again, if I'm moving stuff, I, I, I wanted to get some better tool storage. I love that this was my grandfather's box, but it hasn't really been the right box or tool for the job for a long time. My stuff is really, really jammed pretty tightly into here. It's organized, but like, you know, wrenches, for example, are split between like three drawers because they just don't all fit. These drawers are really tiny and they don't have ball bearing slides either. So I sort of took a step back and asked myself, well, what would I like to have in here? If I'm going to move stuff around to accommodate a new toolbox, what would I like to have? And I do like the U.S. General boxes from Harbor Freight. So I ordered a 56-inch base cabinet and top. They're actually behind me. That's what I need your opinion on. And I also ordered a tall Vidmar cabinet that I've wanted ever since I've seen the darn things and I've been saving for a long time. I ordered it. That's also here. But what do I need your opinion on? Well, let me show you. Here's the U.S. General toolboxes I went with from Harbor Freight. I ordered these actually a little over a month ago, and I just picked them up yesterday. And I, yes, I ordered two different colors on purpose. Actually, orange is one of my favorite colors, and I really wanted to do contrasting colors and just sort of bring a little bit of color here into the shop. And I'm really happy with the colors of both of these. However, this guy, when I took the lid off, uh, I don't know what happened to the paint on this. There are... Like there's this end here, and then it's the same thing with that corner over there where the paint, like I don't even, maybe they tried to pack it up while the paint was still wet. I'm not sure. Uh, that also extended less to, to a lesser extent, but there was the same thing kind of going on in this, the whole side here and the side over there as well. I actually was able to, to buff that out with some rubbing compound and this guy, uh, at least on the sides. Uh, the damage was not as deep there. The damage here is really deep. I did try and buff it out and fix it over here. And it's so deep in the paint that you can see I'm starting to get to the primer underneath of there. So I got some choices. I can have him reorder this, but it's going to take another 30 days minimum uh, for it to come in. And I'd really like to kind of get started on shifting things around in here. I could get a different color. I think they have red and black, um, but I really like the orange. And it doesn't seem like too many people do like uh, two different colors on the boxes, which I don't know why. I think it'd be neat to do an accent color, but you know, <laughs> be honest with me. If you think that's stupid down in the comments, let me know. But I, I like the idea of uh, doing two different colors. The, the other option is I can just keep this box and get a discount on it. I think they said they'd give me 20% off if I just keep this. And I thought, what if we did like a 3D printed, like sort of accent slash uh, protective piece uh, that just covered this whole top rail on both sides? Because there's, there's a whole lot of just color on the top of that without any contrast. Like these are black, the drawer pulls. What if we did like black sort of protective covers that went over the box here. So they'd extend down maybe, I don't know, maybe another 25 millimeters below this point. So imagine it covering this face, this face, and then down maybe 25 millimeters or so on that face and then straight back. I think that might kind of look neat and would also solve the problem with the paint since we'd be completely covering it. Yeah, I think these are 22 inches deep. Yeah, actually a little bit less, like 21 and a half, which is a little shy of 550 millimeters. The Soval SV08 Max is 500 by 500 on the build plate, but this design is not very wide if we were to do that. So I think we could run it at a diagonal and still have those as like a single piece print. So let me know down in the comments, what would you do? Have them order another one, wait 30 days, which means I'm kind of in limbo with just boxes floating around in here for 30 days, go with a different color or cover up the damage in the paint on this one. I'm leaning towards the, the 3D printed parts to cover up the damage because the, the paint's gonna drive me nuts. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person that I, my eye is just always gonna go right to that. I can't, I, I can't help it. 
And here's the other cabinet I mentioned. This is the one made by Vidmar. I've wanted one of these for a long time. Uh, even used, they're pricey. And I, I'd been saving for a while, and one came up for sale on clearance on Zero, and I stacked some other coupons I had, and I got a pretty good deal on this. Actually, I got this thing cheaper than what I've seen a lot of the used ones uh, go for. But this also did not make it to my shop undamaged. I, I, don't, I, just, I guess I just have terrible luck with this stuff. Uh, I actually heard this fall over in the back of the delivery truck, like so close to my garage. It almost made it to the shop. For some reason, they decided it was a good idea to just let this free stand on this pallet in the back of the truck and not even attach it to anything. It wasn't strapped to the side of the truck, nothing. It was just free standing in the back of a box truck. And sure enough, they opened the back of the box truck and this thing was laying on its front, having fallen over onto the pallet jack that they had in the back of the truck. And surprisingly, because these are built so stout, I think this is like 600 pounds empty, uh, the only damage it really took was uh, some of the drawers got kind of crunched into each other and there's paint missing from the top and bottom. I don't care about that. There is a dent here. It's tough to see in this light. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, there's various places where I think the whole frame just flexed a little bit and, you know, the paint cracked. And I don't even know how they did that. They might have hit that with a forklift loading it. These guys are so careless. Or I just have bad luck. I don't know. <laughs> Comment below, are you able to get stuff like this to your shop in one piece or do you have as bad a luck as I do? But either way, this is gonna be incorporated into the new shop uh, design as well. Well guys, I really appreciate you hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. And I know the format was a little bit different, but I really wanted to get your opinion on that box and I really wanted to challenge you guys on that Y pipe. I'm really curious what you guys can come up with in Onshape for the least number of steps to design that part. And if this is by chance your first time here on the channel, this is all we do. It's all functional printing and shop stuff and design and engineering. So if you like that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And guys, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. And if you do, I'll see you next Friday.